What is going on, you guys? We are going to do another installation of Fly Tying Friday. Um, on the truck, you all been guiding, been doing a bunch of European nymphing, high sticking, whatever you want to call it. And, um, you know, having a super heavy anchor fly on that river and any river that's like that, super deep, super fast, um, lots of big pocket and a lot of pocket water to fish, you want something super heavy. This is a five and a half millimeter tungsten bead very large, uh, with a size 12 Umqua U555 jig hook. So it's a 60 degree jig, I believe. And uh, yeah, so we'll just get started. Thread color really doesn't matter. This is gonna be mostly material here. Very little thread's gonna show through. Okay, start our thread base. Work our way to the back of the fly. Um, this particular pattern uh, we have a lot of nocturnal stone flies and golden stone flies on the Truckee, so lighter colors, at least on the California side, have been the ticket for me. So we're just going to use this tan silly thread. And you can always color this if you need to. Um, I just kind of like the contrast, and I think that it gets eaten just as good as anything else. So I'm going to take my silly legs, tie these babies in real quick, this up. So, okay, these don't have to be super even and I'll cut them and kind of manipulate them how I want to once I actually get that point. And I'll wrap back up just to make sure that bead's still seated. And now I'm going to add a piece of wire for this. I like to have just a thin gold wire to kind of stick with the theme here. This is a, a small size UTC wire. This. Okay, so I'm gonna tie this in first. I'm gonna tie it on my side so I have a better view of it. Okay, that's it. And then I have some model thin skin. This is, I don't really know the pattern on this one. I have had these things, I mean, I bought one of these and I've had them for two or three years each. <laughs> but uh, so I, cut, I went ahead and cut into strips. Uh, this is probably a quarter of an inch thick, so it's pretty thick. We're gonna use this to cover the entire back of the fly to give it that dark back with a light belly, like a lot of these stone flies have. Um, it's actually tied on, or this uh, material is essentially stuck to paper, so you're gonna actually separate it like so. Pull it off. Okay. And then I like to cut a little point here just to tie it in so it's not as bulky. That perfect. We'll tie that in like. Oh wait, sorry, made a mistake. I'll tie it on this off side, which makes tying it in honestly kind of a pain. But that's okay. Okay, and so now we're going to use a gold or a brown dub on this. Um, kind of depends on what you have available. For me, I typically end up tying it with like a golden brown ice dub like so. These noct nocturnal stones that I'm talking about have these insanely, uh, they have really, it's like they're black and white almost. It's like black and tan, very, very light in color in some parts and they're pitch black in other parts. Kind of an interesting bug to see. Okay, so I'm gonna wrap this back. Start my body there. You don't want it to be super thick, um, but you want it to be thick enough that um, it has the profile that you're looking for. A lot of people, you know, a lot of stoneflies are tied, in my opinion, a little bit too sparse. If you actually see those things in person, they are, they are thick little things. Okay, so I'm gonna fold this over like so, just like that. Okay, I'm gonna take my wire now. I'm going to wrap this up the body. And this is honestly kind of just also a way to secure the thin skin if it ever tears. Okay, so there's the body of the fly. I'm gonna helicopter this off. 
like so. And then I'm gonna fold this back because we're gonna use this to create a wing case, right? So fold that back a little bit, a couple wraps there, try and get it out of the way. Okay, so now we start using a little bit more of the, our silly legs, same piece that I have cut. Um, one thing that's super important to realize when it comes to fishing flies like this, in the context that you fish these, this is way too heavy of a fly to be fishing in almost any other context, right? It's, it's, it sinks way too fast. Um, unless you're high sticking and you can tight control the depth and it's a very quick river. So like some of the runs on the truck are five feet long. So you have to get this thing down to where the fish are at immediately. Um, which is why this is tied so heavy for my other stonefly patterns and stuff. I don't fish beads this big. Um, but what I'm getting at is the fish have very limited amount of time to see this fly. So all they're going to see is a quick glimpse of a profile and they're going to eat. Um, I'm saying that because this fly is not super anatomically correct. It's not identical to what the flies look like. Um, it's suggestive, which is what most flies in fly fishing are. So instead of having, you know, six legs at the, or three legs on each side that are short, tied to the body, I'm going to go two legs on each side that are a little bit longer and they're going to be in this light color like this. And honestly, it just kind of makes the tying process a lot easier. Um, and quicker and this is very much so a guide fly so I like it to just be kind of straightforward so we're gonna tie these in real quick just like so and you can see that I tied a little bit of space too I, li I don't like it when it just is separated just into a straight V I like having a little bit of separation between the two legs okay same thing on this side now Okay, so first things first is I'm going to add a little bit of dub just to make sure that these legs stay a little bit more stationary. Right now they could kind of migrate around because there's nothing like really holding them in place besides the thread. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a couple wraps back here and by doing this too I can kind of dictate the positioning of the legs if I wrap a little bit of a dub behind it and in front of it like so okay so now I'm going to take this thin skin instead of folding it straight up what I'm going to do is I'm going to fold it up and then I'm going to fold it back like so so you can see it kind of makes this little fold that goes over the body there and I'm going to do it one more time just like so okay and that's as far as thin skin goes with us in this journey. Like that. Okay. And then I'll take a little bit more of this dub. And this is just gonna mostly be to finish the fly, but to cover any lax thread wraps. That there, and then I'll do a couple right behind the bead. Now I'm going to whip finish. Like so. Pull that tight. All right. And then just to make sure that I'm happy with all the proportions, I'm going to take a look at the fly. The legs are notably too long. Um, so we're going to take this, cut them a little bit shorter. And these ones up front are also a little bit too long. I'm going to try my best to kind of just ballpark the length I'm looking for here. Those are about even right there. And this one I'm gonna snip right about there. Perfect. And there you have it. You can kind of see you have a light belly or yeah, light, light underbody, and then it's basically black on the top. Um, this is a pretty good just all around stonefly pattern, whether it's a golden stone. Um, you can change the colors of this right here. So if like say you want to make it look like a salmon fly, you would use a little bit larger of a hook, obviously. A little bit longer and you could tie this with a black maybe mix in a little bit of orange dub on the bottom um, if you have some like olive stone flies or small olive stone flies or winter stones or you know you name the species of fly squalas whatever um, all of those you can just vary this exact thing and this is a great anchor fly to fish on the bottom of your high sticking rig 
and then you can fish basically whatever fly you want above it, weightless or not, because this thing is so heavy, it straightens everything out, gets your flies down immediately. So uh, give it a tie. Let me know what you think in the comments, and uh, yeah, see you guys next time.